What up? Robin Black, hanging out here, YouTube channel, Mark Manoharan, uh, is working the board and the computer and the uh, camera. I've got my phone here. This is Periscope. Please follow me on Periscope. Sometimes we go live during the fights. Sometimes we go live here on the YouTube channel. Uh, just off the top, I do want to ask you... Um, if you are so inclined and you enjoy spending time with us and you enjoy the work we're doing, please check out patreon.com, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash Robin Black. Every 10 or 15 bucks helps like crazy. We're spending the money to go and get chats and hangs and analysis and discussions with fighters and coaches. Uh, if you look on the YouTube channel under uh, Hotel Hangout or under... Uh, shuttle wrap up, you'll see Dominic Cruz, you'll see Jorge Masvidal, Jorge, you'll see um, John Anik. Those are what we're trying to get, and your uh, crowdfunding really helps us. So thank you. I can't thank you enough. Uh, today, we want to take a look in only a couple of days, depending on when you watch this. We got Weidman versus Gastelum coming up on Fox. Gonna be killer. Super pumped for that fight, but also kind of not pumped. So I like both guys very, very much. And when you see guys you like have to smash each other up, uh, and only one of them, more importantly, they're, they're okay with the hurt, the hurt of the game, but only one of them gets what they're after. You know, victory is important to these fighters. Vic you need to win. Their dreams, uh, Calvin wants to be the, you know, middleweight now. He's five foot nine for crying out loud. He wants to be the middleweight champion of the world. Weidman wants to regain his middleweight title. Only one of them will move in that direction. It's tough. Uh, but we've got other fights too. And a couple other really cool ones. I just want to talk about them for a few minutes. Um, super stoked. Jimmy Rivera and, and Almeida. Thomas Almeida. That's a really, 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 really cool one. First, Elkins and Bermudez. Darren Elkins. Uh, did you see the Bectic fight? Anybody see it? If you did not, I will not be offended. Press pause right now. Press pause and go watch Darren Elkins versus Mirsad Bektik. This fight, uh, a couple days later, made Joe Rogan cry just talking about it. For real. And if you've never cried from uh, watching a fight or experiencing a fight or seeing something like that, then uh, try harder. You know, connect to it a little deeper. There's some incredible beauty that happens in these things. Incredible. You're watching, of course, you're watching skill and training and, and dreams being achieved and, and not achieved and stuff. But you're seeing the will of, of humanity. You're seeing... Watch Condit Lawler. Yeah, Condit Lawler. Go check that out, please. Go see that. Spend a little time. We'll, we'll be here when you come back. Uh... You see what humans are capable of. And there's so many, I know I'm supposed to be talking about two fights, but I'm going to go off on a tangent. It's what I do. There, there's so many layers to what a fight is. You know, there are at, at its weakest, at its most frenzied moment, two, two, you know, frenzied people are playing rock, paper, scissors. And one of them wins. Other moments, it's, People are running algorithms, sorting algorithms, gathering all the information and making decisions in split time, in split seconds, less than moments, milliseconds. Other times people are being asking, asking their body to do things that they're barely, or most of us would be incapable of. Other times you're overcoming fear or terror or pain or, uh, and, um, all of these things, you're seeing heart and courage and all of these things were all personified in Darren Elkins in that Bechtick fight. To watch somebody, I mean, you're watching someone overcome. You know, uh, what's the, you ever see The Revenant? You see The Revenant, Mark? Some heavy shit. I don't know if you've seen The Revenant. Um, why was, if you wa did not watch that movie, uh, it doesn't take you much investigating to see that it is a, a movie about the human spirit of what it will take 
for humankind to go out further into the world, whether you're going to a, the new world in North America or eventually we're going to go to another planet or sometimes, you know, uh, people are in, in, running into a burning building to pull babies out. All of these things, courage and the resiliency and the ability to, to have so much asked of you that it is not possible, but then it turns out it's possible. That's what Darren Elkins did against a more skilled, bigger, more evolved, more explosive, more physiologically superior guy. Just beat the fuck out of him. Just beat the shit out of him. Just beat him down. It's hard to watch. You're yelling at it. If you haven't seen it again, this will be a spot for you to press pause. But now if you have seen it, you know what happened, but I didn't know what happened when I was watching it in real time. And I was yelling at the rat. Why won't you stop this? This guy's had enough. He can't come back. He can't do anything. That guy's too young, too good, too strong, too technical, too dominant, too aggressive, too devastating. You just have to stop this fight. No. Taron Hawkins was like, that's enough. You know, what do we got? Six billion people on the planet? Well, there's 10 or 20 of us that can handle this and come back. And I'm one of them. My name's Darren the Damage Elkins. I'm not the fucking smartest guy in the world. I don't think anyone's accusing Darren Elkins of being immense a genius. Not the most handsome guy. No offense, Mr. Elkins. Please don't take... Just calling it as I see it. Uh, but this is what he was put on earth to do. That's what he was put on earth to do. And I'm so happy for that guy that he has the, the chance to do it. Um, there's uh, Ask Robin Black 15 will be coming up later on this week, depending on when you watch this. There's a question about, about you know, human cockfighting and stuff. I am so glad that, fi that mixed martial arts, the UFC, all of this exists for, for Darren Elkins, for Carlos Condit for Rory McDonald, because otherwise these guys would be wandering aimlessly through this new world that we all live in, this modern world, with no purpose, no ability to show what they are, why they are genetically different than us. So yeah, I'm happy for Darren Elkins. That, that, watching that fight, and uh, you won't see many things like that in your life, but it's special. So now we have, uh, have, I'm supposed to be talking about Elkins versus Bermudez. Uh, so we just, that fight encaps, encapsulates Darren Elkins. Also, it doesn't do the full justice because he was the nail the whole time. When he's the hammer, he just grinds and grinds and grinds. Point him at it and he'll work. Whatever the thing is, he'll go to work. You need him to put in, you know, 20 fence posts, he'll put in 40. You need him to climb up something and take something apart, he'll do it five times. You need him to work eight hours, he'll work 12 hours. That's who he is, along with that other thing. So we know what he is. He's also incredibly gr gritty and tough, and he'll just keep going. So Dennis, Dennis has to face that. And when you're, Dennis has to love that. Dennis has to embrace that and cherish it. Doesn't mean he has to go fight him like this. And, oh, it's gonna be my time to go and be in a blood and guts. No, that's not what you're here to do. If you're Dennis, you want to calmly, analytically, and technically express boxing and wrestling and the blend with which you have taken the art of free, flight, free fighting and developed it based on those two and low kicks, those fundamental building blocks. Free fighting is not boxing or wrestling or kickboxing or any of those things. It's free fighting. But his route to, to improvisational, you know, structureless free fighting was through the arts of wrestling and boxing. So use some of the fundamental roots of those and express it in free fighting. And uh, don't get drawn into it. Don't make it. Darren Elkins' world. Don't make it about a test of that. It might be, in, it might be enticing to want to know if you can do that too, if you're Dennis, but you don't need to do that. You don't need to do that. Dominate. Go in and dominate. Get on top. And, and when you dominate 
a Darren Elkins. If you can, if you can, you dominate him positionally. You don't have to, it doesn't have to be blood and guts. Squash him, no space, no space at all. Shoulder pressure across the face, short punches, tire him, slow him. It's hard, but it can be done. What you don't do is go back and watch that fight and just start getting excited about you getting to be in one of those if you're Dennis. You go in, and it doesn't matter what he is. If you dominate him, if you physically dominate him, if you beat him to the punch, if you beat him to the positions, if you win the positional exchanges, if you make it math and science and running plays, winning plays, winning exchanges on the football field or the wrestling room or whatever, you just win the exchanges. That's what Dennis has to do. Um, and he wants to be on top. And so does Darren. It's going to be a really ugly, beautiful fight. I really am excited about that fight. And I love Dennis. Dennis is an underappreciated guy who, when he's on his thing, uh, the way Dennis fought Kawajiri, that's how Dennis wants to fight Darren Elkins. A spaceless, open fieldless, tight, squashing, grinding game. Dennis knows how to do that. And that's what he wants to do, and that's what he should do. Um, there's also on that one, Rivera and Almeida. Um, wow, is this ever the opposite? And not that they're not tough, because they're incredibly tough. But uh, Rivera, both guys lost once ever. Almeida uh, was taken out by, oh yeah, Cody. Of course. Of course. Uh, and he was on a roll, and he felt uh, uh, unbeatable but he was very linear, forward and backward, side to side. He was also pretty rudi appeared pretty rudimentary in his strength and conditioning and weight cutting. Seemed to be able to win these fights on grit, toughness, desire, willingness. Very also very emotionally attribute-based winner. Um, the question is, has he got technically better? Punches, offense was great. But you saw against Cody when he was, and, and he even um, Brad, one, one punch. What up, Brad Pickett? We love you. Um, Brad, one punch got to him pretty good too. So he was just going to overwhelm you with offense. He's going to take some, and then he's going to take you out. Um, Rivera, on the other hand, just, hey, and I know um, Uriah was his last fight. Uriah would be one, two, and maybe a third while closing distance. Rivera two back and two over. So he's move away and out. I, mean, I worked all night against Uriah. Uriah was slowing down, he's a little older. Uh, the game changes, um, you know, love Uriah. Um, but uh, it's gonna be hard to hit Rivera. That'll be his game. You know what the best thing to do against a guy who wants to overwhelm your offense with his offense? Uh, just touch him up when it's there. That's what Rivera will look to do. Um, you know, I talk about it a lot, about the, the improper language sometimes that we use and how misdirecting it is and misleading. Um, people will be like, oh, Almeida is a volume puncher. We need more volume. That's not good if none of it lands, right? Like, why would that be good? So I go and see, you, go, you hear guys go back to the corner. Oh, we need to get the volume up. We only need one good, clean punch. There's no such thing as, you know, just do punch more. What are we in grade six? Like out in the, out in, at recess? It's not, there's no logic in that. It's just shit you say on TV. Uh, Rivera will look to punch less. But when he, when it's there, it'll be clean. Efficient pinpoint. And if he's going to win that fight, that's how he's going to win it. He will not throw more punches than Almeida. He will land more punches than Almeida. And he'll make Almeida miss, and he'll make him miss by never moving directly backwards. And Almeida, if he's going to get to this guy and win this fight, he's going to show adjustments and improvements in his footwork. Could, he absolutely could. If he knocks out Rivera or starts lighting him up, it's because of where he's moving his feet. Because pre-Cody, Almeida can't get to uh, the Rivera that we saw in the, um, in the Faber fight. He doesn't have the ability to close distance in positionally in a spot to be able to deliver with power. Um, but post Cody Almeida, very well could. So that's what we're looking for in this fight. We're looking for a very, very interesting fight 
between the improvements of Almeida and uh, Rivera's ability to adapt to those in real time while that stud is ripping to his chin. Because if he's in position to land hooks and uppercuts on the chin of Rivera, Rivera will be in trouble. Rivera's game, let him throw all night, let him land very little, and then you land on the clean moments when you get it. It's going to be fun. Those two fights are beautiful. And, of course, Weidman versus Kelvin Gastelum is going to be a, just a stunner of a fight. And uh, I cannot wait. This is going to be a really, really fun weekend of fights. Enjoy the hostilities, my friends.